Good evening, Hrache, and every other viewer that comes in later. How are you all today? I hope everybody's fine. I know I am. And I'm ready to start on Foundation with the new update, version 1.9. Let's start up a whole new game. Now, it's, of course, the preview build, so it'll be full with bugs and stuff like that. Although, I've been playing around with it a bit, and it didn't go too bad. I'm just going to try it out and show what's new and whether you like it or not. And then when it comes out, you can decide whether you want this or not. We'll just play on the Fluvial map. We'll get everything going quickly so that we can just start up with the game. Because that's a lot of fun. And, uh, well, one thing they changed is this whole message system. So you get a lot more messages. It's more like a storytelling that you'll have to, that you can follow. You don't have to, but you can. We're going to follow it just for the sake of this uh, video. So a new beginning. After a long journey throughout the realm, your people finally reached new lands. Your lands. Territories you were asked to settle for reasons of your own. Your villages await your commands. They are eager to advise you of first steps. If you require so. Yeah, we want this um, this whole series up. We want all the tutorials in so that we can see what's new. Well, we can take our first territory and we will put this advice into practice. So we'll find a nice zone. And, um, well, this is a nice zone. Let's start right here. We'll buy this zone. There we go. And now you can complete... A, um advice and then you can go to the next advice you can click it sometimes sometimes not right now we can't but we have to build the village center just hover over with your mouse and you can see it and one of the things they changed is that you can't build all these buildings straight off if you click that you want all the advice and we do want all the advice so you can't just build everything all the time the building queue isn't that full then it takes a few seconds and you get the new advice Opportunities. Organizing work. The second piece of advice comes from a young, enterprising villager. Rather than simply letting everyone fend for themselves, you suggest you organize laborers in workplaces. Builders in their workshop, woodcutters in their lumber camp, berry gatherers at their hut, and so on. Alright, let's put this advice to work, and what we'll have to do is get a builder's workshop. Now we can see that all we can build at this point is the builder's workshop. So that's how this works. It'll just guide you through, and um, although the previous tutorial was okay, um, I think this can guide you a bit better into how develop your how to develop your village. All right, let's build it. We'll add two builders in this case. They'll probably be the next mission, so we already did that. Hey, Kevin! I'm doing well tonight. How are you doing? All right, let's place a lumber camp because that's the next mission. So there we go. Um, I'm thinking of. Um, Placing it right here next to the trees so we don't spoil any trees or that have them removed. So let's build it. I guess our builders will now go there and start to produce it. And we have to paint some extraction zones. It's always one of the fun parts of this game, painting the map. I mean, I have been called Bob Ross before. So why not do a little bit of painting then? Well, there we are. That's the painting. Everybody can paint. Alright, there we are. Zoning is done. We can do a lot of wood chopping as soon as the hut's done. Good thing is we started off with 10 people, so we'll have plenty of people. We'll just have to speed things up a bit. So things will go fast. Alright, let's get this lumber camp done. There it comes. 3, 2, 1, lumber camp build. Alright, we'll add two woodcutters since we're going to need a lot of wood. And we have quite a few free people at this point. We'll have to gather food. We have to produce berries. Now, what I like about this tutorial is that it gets a little bit more difficult every now and then. So, right here it just told us to build a lumber uh, camp. Now we'll have to produce berries. So we'll have to think ourselves, how can we produce berries? And then you find the gathering hut. And then you start producing berries. Now, of course, if you know the game already, um, that's not really that hard. But it does help you, if you don't know the game, to start thinking about things yourself, trying to look things up and stuff like that. And that can really be helpful. Um, so I, I really like that about this tutorial. It just gets slightly more difficult, so that you have to start thinking. All we'll have to do now is wait for a builder. 
so that they can finish this gathering hut. Now we can't speed it up anymore, so this is the highest speed we can get. There go our builders. Come on, let's go. Start building this gathering hut. That's all we're going to build right now. James Aldrin, James Aldrin. Yeah, I, I, I read that, but he's not going to disappear, I've read. He also gave away his voice rights, and uh, his voice is recorded quite extensively, so they can use his voice forever as Darth Vader. It's just not him talking, but it's a computer. But I've been told that they can do that rather well these days, so you don't hear the difference. But it'll be interesting. Can't imagine anybody else doing that voice. It just wouldn't work. Alright, we gathered some food. Next advice. A whole new advice chain. So every time you get a whole new advice chain, you get this message. And then you just get a few new missions. Now that you have organized your laborers, you can see to their needs and happiness. Make sure that they have access to fresh water and housing. As for food, you will first need people to store and distribute the berries they collected. From there, your village will be having everything to welcome the first wave of immigrants. Alright, let's put this to good use. We need a granary, a transporter, and we'll have to assign berries to the granary. Well, since I want the granary rather close to the village center, where there will be the market stall, we'll build it right here. Now, we can already see that there's a demand for stone. And right now the tutorial doesn't tell us anything about stone. We'll have to figure that out ourselves. Now, of course, I know this game, so I know we'll have to build stone. But for new players, this can be a good help to just start thinking about what can I do, what do I have to do. Sorry, that was a little cough. I hope my quick button still worked and you didn't have to hear that. Um, so yeah, here we are on our way to build a stone camp. Now, they usually prioritize the building closest to them, which is in this case the granary, but they can't build it. So that's why I'm prioritizing this one. So now first they should bring in all the goods here and start to build it. Yeah, I have another free area. I know, I know, I know. I was going to that uh, soon. Uh, right now we just need this one. So let's just keep going with this. So one of the other things that you see has changed is your progression. We can now see our prosperity right here. It's quite low because only population counts at this point. As soon as we start trading, for instance, we'll get commerce points. As soon as we get extra territories, we'll get territory points. So that's a way to get into our progression. And if we click it, we can see that with our prosperity right now, we can unlock the warehouse, the bailiff's office, and a wooden bridge. Those, And we have to buy them with points or with coins, I'm not sure. I think with coins. Um, later on, we can get uh, other special buildings, but we we'll have to reach a certain prosperity level. So this is a way to measure your growth and how big you've gotten. And I really do like this new setup. It's very enjoyable, and it helps you guide you a bit through your village, and it just feels... Uh, kind of natural that you you progress in your village and among progressing you just unlock new things. That's really nice But yeah, Gratje is right. We have another zone so we could already think about where to place it um, I think we're just going down here towards the river slowly. So let's hit that territory button and it's free No, we have n zero free territories to redeem. So we'll have to pay 250 coins for this we should get um, another zone soon with one of the missions, but we don't have one yet. This will cost us 250 coins, and I'm not going to spend that. Um, I believe once we have set the market up and stuff, then we'll get a free zone. But we'll see. Let's first accumulate food. To do that, we need this one up. Let's get at least two miners, but how many people do we have free? One, two, only two now. So yeah, two miners should do the trick. And um, they'll gather some stone slowly. We only need five for this, so they'll do two trips for stone. And that should be it. And I think after that we'll go to... the. Uh, You had two free for starters. Well, maybe the game knew that it was you playing. And I, I think the game just know that you want to get an extra zone to start putting in some grain and stuff so you can start brewing your own beer. Otherwise, how can you play the game? So I guess that's the thing, that you get two zones, just you get just one for all the grain and hop.
Have they introduced any military upgrades? I'm not sure because I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, it has been quite a busy week. Uh, not that I was that busy, but with our little girl sick, I haven't been playing a lot of games. So I've been trying this out for a bit. Played for like one and a half hours. Didn't get to military yet. Um, so I, I have no clue. I just found out about these new features and that the rest basically kind of works the same, although you get new things with your monastery and stuff, so at a point I really want to go to that and, and see what that does. But for now I'm not sure. Maybe Hratje knows you already played this as well. I just was really looking forward to doing a stream again and um, yeah, I haven't been completely reading up on this. And the little time I had, I was busy on a surprise video for this uh, Thursday. Um, and that's ready now, so that's fun. So yeah, I, I, I haven't been reading up on it. Oh, that could very well be... Can you describe a few of the bugs that you have experienced? So maybe we can see if they're still in there, or... I do believe they already did an extra little update to enhance the preview build. And of course, that's why we have this preview build, so that all the bugs can get found before it really comes out. So, basically, if we find bugs now and we report them, we'll be adding to the success of this new build. Alright, Granary is slowly getting done. And, of course, it just works the same. You assign a transporter, we'll assign some berries to it. I'd like to do two, so we can stockpile quite a few. And that's all done now. And... Um, we have to now buy a territory and paint a residential zone. Question is, do we now get a free territory? Yeah, we now have one free territory to redeem. So we got one free now. I'm going to unlock this one. And then... Ooh, it says we have another free territory. Nice. No, we have to pay for this one. Alright, so that's it. It doesn't add up. But now we have plenty of space to do some nice work. And what I would like to do is get some residential going in this area. I have to save some space for the church and stuff like that, but I think this will be fine for some residential areas, so people can start to live there. And I believe... Yeah, we have to fulfill the needs now of all our villagers. And if you remember from before, we'll need to give them some water, so we'll need to build a well in the center of town. And of course we need a marketplace. Now the fun thing with that is you can just... Oops. You can click this. And then you get an option. We have to select a function. We can do a free build or a market stalls court. So if you do the free build, you get all the options there are to start building. Although with the market it doesn't really work that way yet. Um, but for instance with the... Um, uh, what's it called? Um, the... Uh, oh, I don't remember the name. Anyway, there's different build options that you can get. Right now, if we choose the uh, market uh, court, the store court, then you can just get finished marketplaces. You can just build them and you can continue. But for instance, with the manor lord, you get all these different options if you choose the uh, just build around option. I think they're still working on it and they will exclude um, different pre-made setups in it. So if you want to build a certain marketplace, you can just build a prefab marketplace or a prefab manor lord. I think they will include those in there. So some sort of building schematics. Um, but right now they're, they're not in there yet. It's just the option to put in. But we'll see. This is fun now. And now we get the first housing done. We need five houses. We already get the well. So they can get some water. And as soon as we provide them with water and food, um, and a house, of course, then they should reach 100% happiness. The well, the market, the market tender, and assign berries to the market stalls court. All right. Now, of course, as you can see right now, we just have the map mode. There's all these different overlays that you can put on. Just go to your visibility right down here. And for instance, if you click the overlay tooltip, you can uh, hide and show the overlay laying tooltips. So right now we won't get a tooltip. And now we do. So if we click this, villagers unemployed. And if we put it out, no, it shouldn't not be there anymore. Um, but for instance, now we can see all the zoning. You can just leave this on and you can always see the zoning that you have. Uh, especially when you do farming and stuff like that, that can be really good because then you can see where you've put your fields. 
Um, and now, normally, when you click a farm, you can see the field. When you don't click the farm, you can't see it. But with these overlays, you can turn it on and off. You can really see the field. Or if you want to make a few nice uh, pictures, uh, sprint screens from your village without all these borders, you can just click the borders away. So it just looks like a nice town without all these borders. So there's a lot of options that you have. Let's see, this is done. So what we need now is somebody to work in the market. And berries. There we are. Encourage immigration. Assign a job to all your villagers. We did that. And raise happiness to 100. Well, to raise happiness to 100, we need more housing. Four houses need to be built. Um, yeah, this is going to take time, but that's okay. And after this, um, everybody needs to be eating and drinking. And then everything is uh, fine. So we'll, it will be interesting to see. Sometimes the fort won't connect. Ah, that's interesting. With military missions, the game sometimes crashes. All right, so I don't think we're going to get up to that for now, but it will be interesting to see. Hopefully the bugs will get eliminated quickly. Yeah, I think they will. As far as I've... Um, well, I've been playing Foundation for quite a while, and I've done... Uh, I've experienced quite a few updates, and they usually do a thorough job with them. And I know one of the reasons they do this pre preview build in beta is to get more information on how it works and hopefully everybody reports the bugs just like Gratje did and they can get them out before they fully release it. And since they did quite a few big overhauls in the system, for instance progression was quite a big overhaul, um, that really helps to get the bugs out now. Um, and that's where we all contribute of course. So if we find any bugs we will report them just to make sure that this game gets, it, gets as good as it can be. And I've always really enjoyed the game. I think development sometimes is a little bit slow. The last big update was from December last year, so it's been like nine months before this one came out. But at least they're still working on it, and that's what I really like. And this is just a very fun game. Let's take a little bit of a closer look right now. As they're building a house. Well, they sure take their time. Well, everybody has a job, so that's good. Here we can see the progression. If we make enough money, we could already unlock some stuff, but I'm not going to do that. This really looks the same, so there's no difference into this menu. Um, yeah, this is all the same. It's very good now that you can see behind the job what type of villager do you need. So if you need like a commoner or a, a citizen, then it will show here. And This is all surf plus so it can be a surf or someone better and that's really nice that they added that little thing to it here we have the trading towns oh, we're not going to trade yet but I do like the fact that they um, enhance the view a bit and yeah it's a fun it's fun yeah I do like the new progression system although I really want to be able to speed things up a bit more but well that's just it these we're building now. All we need is three more houses to be done. And we should get 100%. And then we can get the new villagers in. And they also made a little change with that. Because um, previously, you did not get the chance to accept immigrants. So immigrants would just come or not. And then they were in your town and you could give them a job. And now you, they, you get really this nice screen and you can accept them. Which is really nice. I like that. So they'll come in, they request an audience from you, and you can accept them in town or not. And that's I, I really enjoy that. And of course, in the beginning, we're going to accept everyone. And I'm not going to zoom in, see what they look like, and then accept them or not. I mean, that's not who I am. But yeah, it's nice that we can we at least have the option. Do we want them in or not? So that's, that's the good thing, I, uh, in my opinion. All right, let's see. Well, we're using the resources here, but well, quite a lot of trees are removed, so... Um, could be a time that we'll have to move this one, or at least destroy it and build a new one. Can't really move it. Maybe that's something they should add at a certain point, that you can just move a building like this. That's one of the things I really like about Farthest Frontier, that you can just pick up a building and replace it somewhere. It takes time, they have to tear it down and build it again, but it's really nice that you can do that.
You had to wait 45 minutes for your first trader? Oh wow, when I unlocked the trade route last time, I had set everything up, I unlocked the trade route, and within a few minutes I got my extra tools that I ordered because the trader was already there. But that, that could very well be a thing on different maps. And there are maps, of course, I don't know, yeah, if, if right here, for instance, if you start on this island, you can't do anything concerning trading until you've built a bridge, so you have to get across. Um, so maybe that could be something to keep in mind, that you have to make sure that traders and new villagers and stuff can actually uh, reach you. Because if you don't, well, then you have a problem, of course. Alright, everybody has a home, so happiness should be able to go up to 100. There we are. Now, we can see a newcomer is approaching your village. Here we can see them walking in. It's two of them. And as soon as they are really where we want them to be, at the center of town, we get the option whether we want to accept them or not. A new advice can be heard. A business-minded villager suggests you establish a trade route with your closest neighbor, Northbury. This will let you sell resources for profit and import the ones you can't produce. You should start with planks, since Northbury needs those. Alright, we'll put this advice to practice. Now you can read here in the message that we're going to need planks. If we click this and we see the missions, then we can see, I'll pin it, um, that we need to build a warehouse and assign planks to it. Um, but we'll have to figure out ourselves how to build planks. Well, we do that with the sawmill, we know that. But, um, well, that's those are the little things that it doesn't explain. So you have to think about that yourself. So we'll build a sawmill right here. I am going to build an extra lumber mill with... No, not yet. So we're going to build the sawmill. We're going to need those planks for the... Um, to build a warehouse and before we oh yeah here we are so you just click this little sign and now we've added two villagers we'll provide them with a job straight away uh, i want an extra forager and i want an extra woodcutter since we're going to be producing planks we need extra wood of course oh you needed cloth well, we'll see. Um, I'm, 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 we're going to find out whether the trader comes in and comes in quickly or not. We'll find out. Um, let's paint this to be an extraction zone as well, so that all trees can be chopped out. I guess by now, those who know me know that I just get rid of all the trees in this game. Simply because, well, they're just in the way and they make things look messy, and I don't want that. Let's see. Yeah, this should work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, it takes a long time to cut down all the trees, but we will do that in the end. We will also build an extra woodcutter soon. And two new villagers are approaching our village again. That's really nice. All we'll have to do now is wait for them to build this. They're going to bring the stones in now. So that's going to take a little time. I think he's also collecting some wood now. I believe there he comes with wood as well. Yes, there he is. So that's good. The builder level 3. So that's really nice. And they brought in... Oh, they brought in everything. So they can now build the sawmill. So we'll have to wait for that. That gives us time to go check out on the... Um, warehouse here we are so if you want to unlock certain buildings you have to be the right prosperity level well this is prosperity zero we are already at six so we can unlock these they will cost you gold coins 50 125 and we are going to unlock the warehouse right now we'll have to do that in order to uh, you just click it once that's it so if you think oh i misclicked yeah well then you have spent money um but now we have unlocked the warehouse we should be able to build one and I'm going to build it right here, of course, with this one, so we can store our stuff there. Here we have the warehouse. We'll put it right along the road. In a little bit more central position. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, let's build it right there. Now they can bring the stones already. Yeah, but it usually takes some time before this all gets cleared out. Ooh, we have to accept those new villagers, of course. We'll have to give them a job. Let's see. I want an extra... Builder and an extra miner, then. It will take plenty of time before this is all done. 
Uh, let's prioritize this one so this one gets done first so we can start to construct a few planks. How vital is a good food supply when you start off? Well, a good food supply is very vital because if you don't provide them with... In, in, in these games it works like um, you have to keep your villagers happy. Uh, let me go check my villagers. Um, you can see right here their happiness level. We can see that a few of them are not very happy and most of them are happy. These are probably not happy because they miss something. So they miss comfort and they miss services. So they want probably a church or a manor lord and they want a home, a, ro a roof over their head, which is basically the comfort right now. If this reaches a zero and they get really mad and it stays that way for a long time, they'll leave. So um, providing them with food is vital because if you don't provide them with food and water, they will get angry very quickly and they'll leave very quickly. And villagers that leave, that will leave you with open jobs and stuff like that. And immigration incentive will go down because if your happiness is low, people don't want to migrate to your town. And if employment is a problem, it will also be low. And if you don't have enough houses, it will be even lower. So this is a problem. Um, so you have to take care of food. But right now you can see we have one foraging hut, we have three foragers, and we have plenty of food in store. We already have 133. Um, so in the beginning you should not worry too much about food. And if you keep food in the back of your head, and every now and then build one or two extra gathering huts, you should be fine. Um, at, as, as a basic source of food. And of course once you get further in the game you can get different types of food, but berries will be quite important the whole throughout the game. Now the good thing is you can build at least two gathering huts per berry bush. These five bushes will just call one berry bush. You can build two gathering huts with each bush and it will just collect a lot of berries. So right now already we can, if we want to, build four gathering huts in total that will all collect stuff. So that's really good. Let's add the two carpenters, the two free people that we had. And now they can start to build some wood. Uh, no, you don't start with any food, I believe, but it's very easy to get it. And in the beginning of the game, it's programmed in a way that villagers won't leave you that quickly. So, um, if you just follow this this guide uh, and do all the basic steps, then you will really have to mess up before any villagers will start to leave. And I even believe that before immigration is allowed, because in the beginning we don't get immigrants, we have to unlock it, before that is allowed, no villagers will leave. So um, don't don't worry about it. Food will be fine, and just later on you'll need to make sure that you keep it be okay. One of the interesting factors, for instance, could be the weather. Um, if you get a lot of rain, you will have a 50% uh, loss in how much berries you can collect, and then though this amount will usually drop quite a bit. But after the rain is over, you can collect as many as you want again. And when there's a lot of rain, we can catch extra fish. So that's a new food source. No, immigration usually isn't a problem. Just keep your people happy. And if you can't keep them happy, then it's good new, no new people will come in. Um, it's, it's better to just fix your happiness. If your happiness is very high, above 90, then you're doing a good job. And apparently your village runs well, so you can welcome new immigrants. If your happiness drops to like 50%, then you better turn off immigration, and you can. If you click this little plus button underneath this menu, you get these sliders and you can, for instance, tell them not to immigrate anymore, so you can keep control over that. Um, but just make sure that you fix your village first, get that happiness up, and then let them immigrate as much as they want. Alright, let's see. We need seven more planks, then we have a warehouse, and we can continue with those missions. Which will actually be really nice. I guess one of the things I do really like about this game is the fact that it's built in a way that even if you don't really know the game, you can get going with it and you can get started with it and you can build up a village to like at least 50 people without any problems, just follow what you have to do. And then later on, things might get a little bit harder and you have to try a few different things and you may restart the game to um, because you've learned quite a few things or you really messed up, but usually just 
Don't go too fast. You can even slow down if you get a bigger town to keep everything under control. That's what I usually do when I get a big town. I go down to speed 2 and every now and then I pause for a few seconds just to get things under control. And then I think most people should be able to, um, to manage a town in here. I think if you compare this game to Ostrif, for instance, then the beginning of the game in Ostrif is a bit harder because you have to get those nine houses done before winter. Otherwise, people will leave. You have to build certain buildings. And I think there's, well, if you want to call it that, but there's a little bit more stress into making sure that you get a good start. And right here, everything is laid out. You can pretty easily get a good start and all the challenges will come a little bit later. At least that's my opinion, but may well, maybe Gratje can say something about that as well. Let's see, no new people coming in yet, but they might arrive soon. And the warehouse is being built, almost done. So here we see it's empty now, so we'll have to assign goods that can be brought there. So let's assign our wood, our planks of course. I want our stone in there. And I want to serve a place for the tools. If we want to buy tools, you have to have an open spot in your warehouse. Right now we do have that. So that a trader that comes in can put his tools in there. So that's something. Ooh, we have two newcomers. Let's accept them. And I put them both in this warehouse so they can transport all those goods around. Because they'll have to walk quite far for the wood and the stone to actually bring it here. So I think that's a good thing. Plan a trade route. Unlock a trade route to trade with planks and allow the sale of planks from the trade resource tab. Alright. So, we have to go to trading, which is uh, right here, resources. Here we have to trade routes and the resources. Now we need 20 planks to unlock a trade route to Northbury. Well, what do they want to buy? They want to buy berries, they want to buy some polished stones, they want to buy planks, they want to buy uh, wine, and they want to buy herbs. So this is actually pretty nice. They want to buy some nice stuff. Um, and they sell tools to us, which cost us quite a bit of money, but they sell them. They sell some cloth, some fish, some common wares, honey, and glass. So if we can, we are going to unlock this trade route. And then we're going to sell them some planks and berries. And if we need to, we're going to buy some tools. Now, if you... Um, know the game Ostriff of course then you know that right there you'll have to set up trade every time a trader comes by your village here it works differently and I'll show you how it works we've unlocked the trade route and all you have to do now is for instance we have to sell some planks you can have no trade with planks we can have we can buy planks and we can sell planks and you can even set uh, a number so what we're going to do is we're going to sell planks all planks that we have above 50 so here, oh, that's a bit too much. So right now it will keep 50 planks and all that we have over that it will try to sell. We'll do the same with berries, but we'll set the number to 150 for now. So now we're going to keep a lot of berries, but we'll sell the excess berries that we have. And we're going to buy some tools. And I'm going to put that number up to 15 because I don't want to buy too many because they're pretty expensive. And now we'll see, we have 10 tools right now. Ah, we have a new villager. That's very nice. Let's give that new villager a job first before we do anything else. Um, let's get an extra carpenter. But right now, if a trader comes, he'll visit us. He'll stop by and he will put in some tools. We have ten tools now, so as soon as we get more tools, we can see that. You could also check the road into town and see if a trader is coming in. Uh, because he usually takes this route as well. So here comes the trader. And now he's walking back. He's... I don't know. This is a trader though, so he'll come in. He'll visit us and then we should be able to sell some... Well, not planks, because we don't have 50. Um, but we can sell a few berries and we can buy some tools. Now what I would really like to do now is get an extra lumberjack going in this area. So that we can chop these trees and we can lay them on and get rid of this one. Because um, if we want to build houses, you can see that these generate negative desirability, negative effects, so people don't want to live here. So after a while, I want these gone, because I want to have a thriving town here. Uh, so we'll have to move that industry at a certain point. And these wood choppers will have to walk quite far now to actually chop those trees, which will lower efficiency, of course. So um, with a wood chopper right here, and it's already done, so all we need now is a few free villagers. 
we can do a lot of wood cutting very quickly because this has a very small walking distance. A new villager is approaching the village. That's great. What are you doing? He's already leaving. All right. Well, interestingly enough, we had 10 tools. We built this lumber camp, which cost us five tools, and we have nine tools right now. So we already bought four, which is interesting. Um, and what I, th what is good to know, if you play this game, uh, you can't run a deficit. So you can see that we um, our daily average balance is mi minus five, but this number shouldn't go too low. It should probably be around one minus minus five or something like that or at least that was the case I'm not sure how it is right now but um, maybe in this update they changed that but as far as I know you can't really reach like minus a thousand that's not going to happen a new advice can be heard the manor house come to you a light-hearted woman announced she and her folks would like to thank you for your hard work oh that's nice it's true that you've made great strides already the, to administrate the village, she suggests you build a manor house and a great hall, then add a tax office. Alright, we're going to do that. Since they really want to thank me, we'll go ahead with it. Now, a good thing to know is that a manor house will increase the desirability of the area. So if you build it right here, we will get a better desirability in this area. So that's exactly where we are going to build. Select a function, a free build or a great hall. What if we do the great hall? Well, then we get these. So you can specify what you are going to build. Um, you get a few less options than you had before. I think before we could build, we already had more options of things that we wanted to build in here. But we're going to start off small and we'll um, enlarge the whole piece later. But this should be it for now, I think. Let's place it back a little bit. We can see the zone in it uh, where it will work. We can set the interactive location. So visitors will now stop by this door and stand right there. And we're going to build it. It will cost us nine tools and we have exactly nine tools. So that worked out well. All right, let's see. It's easy to grow into the game. Yeah, they did a really good job at that. Is there enough that you think this update will bring back the old players and bring the new ones? Well, um, this game always has a special place for me. I really, really enjoy this game a lot. Uh, so yeah, it would bring it, it did bring back me, me bring me back right now, as you can see. And I think quite a few players will come back to it. Um, I think people that already know the game, yeah, they, they will have more fun. New people, yeah, I think so. I think new people would really enjoy this. I don't know how big this game is in terms of um, how findable it is. I mean, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to Farthest Frontier and it has been promoted quite a bit. Um, I don't know how it is with this game. I think the expected audience is very big but the actual audience might be a little bit too small for its potential so i really hope that more people will come in ah we can see a trader right now so let's zoom in right here let's see whatever he is we have one tool and what happens when he's done ah he didn't get us any tools that's too bad well we might have sold him some stuff that could be the case so he's leaving now so maybe we did sell some stuff i don't know um, but I think, yeah, I think this game is... is f I have not played it for a little while, of course. I did a few streams, I think, in, in May or something like that. And that's about it. And now it's always fun to just get back to it. But they do really need to get the bugs out and make sure that um, it works properly. That's why we played this preview build, to help them out with that. Um, so, yeah, if if they keep up the good work that they're doing, then there's certainly a big market for it. All right, let's see, because I have to... <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kevin. You're my local salesman. <laughs> All right, improve your manor house with a tax office and assign a new tax collector. Mandates are available at my great hall. Well, I don't think we finished it already, but we'll see. Yeah, we can't do anything with this, um, because we need a bailiff first, and we're not going to unlock a bailiff. Why not? Well... We don't really have the money for it. We need 100 coins, and we don't have 100 coins. But this is now a great hall. Yes, and it functions that way, so that's interesting. 
Create a sub building. Now yeah, we can create a tax office. And now we get extra options here, so that's pretty cool. Nice. So, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, we can select a mandate, but that's not going to happen. Tools are coming in. Wooden tower allows you to promote villagers to higher statuses. Yeah, I know. So, maybe Gratje can help me out with this, because I haven't checked this out. Normally, you could just select a rustic hall and tell it what it is. So now this is the Great Hall. Um, but before, I could just tell this to be a um, treasury, for instance, or stuff like that. And right now, I can't do that. A newcomer is requesting an audience. Well, now you're in. We'll give you a job. That'll be good. You can forage some goods. So right now I can't do that. So I guess if we click the tax office now and we just build this, this should be the tax office then. Alright, we'll do that. Let's see. Let's build and see if this will become the tax office. Should be. Because, yeah, tax office. Ah, that's how it says now. So you have to select before what it's need, what it's going to be. This is now the great hall, because we've built this as the function great hall. And this is now the tax office. All right, great. Figured it out. So it's not that hard to this game. You can figure things out on the go. That's really not a big issue. Now, let's see. There's plenty of room for housing. I want to save this space a bit for the church. So let's do it like this. Yeah, well, they changed that up then, because normally you would click it afterwards and then select what you do. So now it's good to know. Yeah, you're a great audience. I really like you. I'm glad you're all here. And you guys really didn't tell me what have you been doing this week. How much fun did you have? Or how much tears did you shed because James Earl Jones will no longer be the voice of Darth Vader? Alright, we're not really making money. That's a bit of a concern. We'll have to start making some money at a certain point. Now, it's usually because I built too many construction buildings, so this one will cost us one in maintenance. Um, we already have two gathering huts, so that will cost us two in maintenance, and that's why we run a slight deficit. Um, it will get better as soon as we start selling a few more goods. And the whole reason that we're not buying any tools is because we're not making any money. Um, and now that we have the excess planks, we should also be able to sell a few extra planks. So that should work out. Extra villagers, of course, bring in extra money because they'll also be buying some food. That's one of the things that will help as well. So we'll see. Here comes the trader. Let's see if we can uh, do a nice trade now. He went by the granary and I think he bought something, but I'm not 100% sure. What does he want to buy? He wants to buy 10 berries. Alright, let's see. Do we get... Tools? No, we didn't get any tools. We did sell planks, I believe. Yeah, because the planks were removed. So yeah, we did sell planks. We got a little bit of money for it. Not enough, but at least it's something. And we have to start making some money in order to buy tools. One piece of tool cost us eight. So we'll need that money. Ever so slow it will come in. And, well, because we don't have the amount of tools yet, we need one more. We can't build the tax office completely yet, but hopefully soon we can get that and assign a tax collector. And then hopefully we can get some extra taxes. And that's what that's one of the big changes they made in the game. That normally your income would ha rely heavily on your um, commerce. So trading, selling and using the market in the right way. And that has changed a bit to actually start making money by earning taxes. Um, and you have to find a good trade-off, of course, between how high you set your taxes, how happy everybody can be, and stuff like that. So, uh, that's something that we're going to explore while we are busy with this. Uh, and that will be a lot of fun. Finding out what's, um, what ways there are to set it up, and how we can do it in a way that everybody is happy and we get good amounts of money from it. 
But now we just need eight coins and a tool. Right, let's click this guy again. Yeah, he already bought us some berries, which is good. That means that we have a few coins now. So hopefully we can buy that one tool that we need for the finish the tax collector's office. Yeah, we bought three tools, actually. That's good. I thought a tool would cost us eight, but apparently not. Let's see. Yeah, it does say it costs us eight coins, but it's fine. Always happy to buy more. Oh yeah, going to 100 people in one go. Then you have been playing for quite some time, but it's it's fun. Alright, let's see. We can't build... I'm going to keep this one person free. Yeah, the text collector is done. So let's put in the text collector now. And now we will be starting to collect some taxes. So now that you have access to the building that gives you splendor towards a specific estate, raising your splendor towards an estate will increase your influence with it over time. Be careful though, as each estate prefers that you dedicate the splendor of your village towards them. That's interesting. Alright, we can get a bailiff, but we're not going to do that. And we have more opportunities. So this will not work out, but let's get another one. Finally, by yourself, in the Great Hall, you spend a few minutes of silence thinking about your aspirations and the future of your village. Alright, let's do that. Providence has been good to you and your people so far, and it seems like everything is possible. We should all aspire to greatness. Let's think about this later. I will continue on my own. Oh, we should all inspire. Alright, well... Defining a village aspiration. Track a village aspiration. I should... I should to pick a village aspiration that fits my ambitions. Alright. We'll see. Um, edicts and privileges. That's all locked. Now we have unlocked the labor, the kingdom and the clergy. So that's really nice. We can actually unlock um, new things here. That's really good. I really like that. Um... Ooh, let's see, what can we build now? We can build something new. Ah, the church. That's really good. Well, at least we're going to go with the church. Since we're going to need that. We'll have to find a... Um, optional mission. So let's see. Reach a prosperity of a thousand. Well, that could be one. Reach a prosperity of a thousand and reach a rating of 50 with every estate. Well, there's a lot of missions that we can do, but we're going to start with reach a prosperity of a thousand. That will be our side quest. Start ruling the village on your own. All right, we'll rule the village on our own. That's nice. Advice followed. All right. I'm but your humble servant. We got a hundred coins. That's really nice. A new advice can be heard. I will continue on my own. We're not going to race. Alright, I can't click it away now. Let's see. Favoring an estate. Your village has caught the attention of the three estates of the realm and they expect you to build monuments to their splendor. Such constructions will undoubtedly define the future of your people. And they wonder which of the kingdom clergy or laborers you will oblige first. Well, we're going to build a church, so we'll do this one first. And another new advice can be heard. Let's build a wall fountain. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Let's start with the church, because, well, people are kind of religious in this game, so we'll need a good church. Let's move around, move this a bit. Well, at least we got, to do, we got through the basic tutorial, and I think we did that quite well. Ooh, here's the bell tower. Oh, it's really nice that we can't build the stone one straight away. I like that. Usually you could, but right now we can't. All right. Let's raise this up a bit, because I think it needs to be bigger. Yeah, this is not a real tower. Yeah, this is better. Alright, let's just start with a small church. Um, rustic capacity plus 3. Rustic church capacity plus 6. Alright. Um, I think we should add these. Or at least one on each side, to get some extra capacity. And this is a start. Although we'll have to place a door, of course. So let's place... We'll do a door on the side. I don't know why, but I like a door on the side. So let's build this church. 
At least that's something. And they do want the services, so that's nice. So there's all these different paths that you can follow, different missions that you can do, and they will all help you through the game. Of course, we already know the game, so um, we can do this on our own. Um, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, Gavin. <laughs> All right, well, they're bringing all the stuff. It's quite some stuff. 24 tools for this little church. So we'll have to be buying some tools soon. Luckily for us, so far, no trading issues. The trader is swinging by regularly, as far as I can tell. So that's good. Um, we do need... If No, we already have the amount of planks that we need. So all we need is the extra tools. And that's it. Really happy with that. Um, and we started making a little bit of money, so that's good. Now let's see, we have the tax collector. Um, I'm not going to add it to building right now. Or we should be able to build a um, tax office if we can. Let's see, the economy, taxes. Right here we have the taxes of our town. Now apparently we're not... Um, raising any taxes, so uh, everybody's very happy. You can see right here that um, if we um, go all the way like this, then we can see that there's a big happiness downside, so that's not what we're going to do. So what you have to do is try and find some sort of sweet spot that works for your village. Now, of course, if everybody's really happy, then you can raise higher taxes. That will give you extra money. If they're all really pissed, you could lower them a bit, but of course, you really want to um, avoid... Uh, getting some trouble. Um, but I think right now we're going to set taxes to just the minimum that we can. We will raise some taxes to actually make some money. And I think that's going to work. So let's keep it like this. We raise taxes right now. Ooh, we got a few extra people in. That's really nice. That can fulfill quite a few jobs. I think we had two or three. We had in two or three. Two. All right, that's good. So don't hesitate to set some form of taxes, just not too much, of course. Um, and hopefully that will give us the amount of money that we need to unlock new things. Now, right now, we don't have any influence points with any of the uh, estates, so that that's not going to work. But we could get the bailiff's office or the wooden bridge at a certain point. And our prosperity is already up to 19, so just one more, and we can unlock things like the stonemason farming and fishing. And we can see right now that four points come from our territory, ten come from commerce, so just the fact that we trade, and five come from population. So yeah, that's that's interesting. We make quite a few prosperity points out of our economy. All right, wood for the bishop. The bishop is looking to build a few chapels along the pilgrimage routes. One of his merchants notices your woodcutter camps and wants you to make an offer. All right, we can get selling wood to the bishop. Ah, there's a negative to it now if we don't get it. Accumulate 100 wood inside storage facilities. Uh, let's discuss a better deal. Mm, no. Alright, we'll do it. We'll do the trade. Um, and we did. Perfect. We got 100 coins and 10 splendor. So let's see, if we go to the clergy now, we can see that we have 10 influence now. And um, with that 10 influence, we can unlock the monastery and the rustic church splendor. So we get a stone gate, a wooden gate, a stone belt tower, and a wooden cross to put on it. But these all cost money, so we're not going to do that. But I do like this whole system where everything interacts with each other. So now that we did a mission for the church, we can unlock these new things that will give us more benefits and stuff like that. Although I think it's a little bit early to start building a monastery right now. Um, but just the fact that it all interlocks and, and works with each other is really nice. And it, it does add a little bit to the complexity of the game. I think if you're new, then you'll have to check it every now and then to see what's actually going on. Where do I need to go and stuff like that. But I think it's going to work out. And you just have to do like one or two runs and then you'll know exactly where to find all these different things and stuff like that. So we're going to add two foraging huts. Do we need them straight away? No, we don't need them straight away. But um, I would like to accumulate a few more berries 
And one of the immigration incentives is employment. So as soon as you have like two villagers unemployed in a town of only 27, that's too many and it will lower the immigration incentive. So I do want everybody to have a job and for that we need to have jobs available. And at this point we only have three transporter jobs, a mining job and two more transporter jobs available. Now these transporter jobs aren't really that important because we don't have to transport that much at this point. So I want to give them a useful job then and when they get some berries for us we can sell them for money so that's good. So that's why I keep adding on those buildings. Um, we don't necessarily need them at this point, but it's very good to keep your village running and to earn some extra income with free villagers. And you don't want any villagers that don't have a job, so they'll just be bad for immigration. Let's see, do we have... No, we have no free territories, so we're not going to buy anything yet. We have two new villagers incoming, that's nice. I think our church is uh, almost done. Just this piece. But they should already be able to go to church. And as we can see right here, 57 people can go to church. Let's ring the bells. Oh, I don't hear it. Ah, there we hear it. Very softly. All right, well, they rang. Guess I'll have to adjust the audio a bit if we really want to hear it. Uh, but yeah, people can now go to church and we can see happiness going up already. It's now just down by 5% because of the taxes. Otherwise, we would have had 100% happiness, which is great. Ah, the new people. One, two. Well, we'll give you two jobs. I want one extra 10 sporter in the granary. And let's get the extra miner. That's fine. Now we're losing money again. That's probably because of trade. Yeah, because we had to trade for quite a few tools. So, quite soon, we will stop trading for tools. We'll just leave the option open, but when we have the amount that we want, we're not going to build any new ones. So, um, then we'll save some money on that, and that should be making us money. Because without the trade, or just selling some stuff, we should be making money. Alright, let's get rid of all these zones that no longer apply. And, yeah, that works. Alright, we have an envoy requesting an audience. The Churches of the Faith, words of your village, first church, have reached the clergy. They appreciate your dedication to the faith and thus hold you in higher regard. Alright, thanks. We gained 10 points. That's nice. Clergy is pleased. Acquire rustic church splendor in the book. Build a rustic church in a stone belt tower. Oh, oh, thank you very much. So now we'll have to unlock the... Um, Stone Church. Oh yeah, we don't have the money for it. The Rustic Church Splendor, and then we'll have to build a church with a stone tower. Now, we're not going to do that anytime soon. We will do that as soon as we actually have the money for it. And as soon as we um, grown a bit so that we need an extra church, because right now we don't need the church with a stone tower. Still not making any money, so they definitely made a few changes to this, because usually I would be making quite a bit of money. But we can see already that most money is spent on trade, and, well, if we stop building things with the um, uh, tools, then we won't be trading for it. We can sell planks and berries, and if we do that, we should be fine. And one of the things we could do, actually, because if we check the trade, these also want to buy polished stone. And if we get to Splendor and to the Common Path, if we can unlock this, the Stonemason's Hut, we can start to produce these polished stones and sell them as well. And that will help us gain extra income. So that could be a way to make some money. We can already see that right now, I believe, the, we actually started making a little bit of money. So let's keep it like that. One, one new villager, that's really nice. You can be a forager work in the new foraging hut. The other one is still being built, but one is already done. I have to say, it does feel a little bit like they actually um, chopped down the trees a bit quicker. Because I have the feeling that we've chopped quite a bit more trees than I usually do. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it just does, it does feel like it. Um, what I am going to do, however, is build a new woodcutter right there next to the trees as soon as we have the money for it and then we'll tear this one down so it doesn't generate new jobs it will just move the jobs from here to there um, but that will be a 
big efficiency plus because right now they'll have to walk very far to get actually to a tree chop it down bring it back then their shift is probably over so they will only get one tree every time and then the um transporter will have to come so i think if we place it right here that's way better here comes the trader all right let's build it because we got some money from trading of course we wait until it's done and then we will start to um uh, tear down the other one. Should probably spend some money on a few tools. Yeah, we bought two tools, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll get there. Um, let's see. Because we have a church already. So we could add some housing in this area. That will be fine. A newcomer approaching our village. That's nice. Um... Ah, three, four newcomers, apparently. That's cool. That should get us a lot of extra hands to do some nice work. Let's see. And, of course, if you're here watching this video, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this. Feel free to talk in the chat. There are a lot of nice people right here in the chat. Our lumber camp is done, by the way, so let's destroy this one. And all these people should slowly move towards this one and start to work here. Yeah, one already did, so that's good. Um, but, yeah, thank you a lot for being here, for taking the time to be here. Feel free to start chatting and talk to me or uh, somebody else right there in the chat. Everybody is really nice. All right. They all got in now, those new workers, so let's give them a job. One, two, three, four. That should be it. And of course, if you like what I'm doing and you enjoy this, give this video a like. If you really want to see more of me and get updated on my new videos, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, but it would be a big help for me. But of course, no obligation. It's all up to you. It's all fine. Here comes the trader again. We should be buying one more tool, I think. Yes. We also sold a few planks, I believe. Yeah. So he bought berries and planks. So that's a good thing. He sold us one tool. So we're actually running green numbers now. I like it that way. I forget. Do they have sea traders? No. N not right now. You can get a, a fishing boat at a certain point. But that was it. Or they should have added this in this update, but I don't believe so. But yeah, so far there weren't any sea traders. Ah, we're getting a better house here now. That's good. I would really like to see sea traders. That would be very nice. Ooh, we have one unemployed villager, apparently. Ah, I think that's one of the woodcutters that still has to go there. Yeah. Couldn't find a workplace with currently assigned job. Well... You should have a place right here. No, he doesn't. Ah. Added one too many to the woodcutters. Let's find a woodcutter level zero. This one. And let's turn him into a forager. That should solve everything. Because we have room for a forager. And now the open space for the um, woodcutter should be occupied as well. Yes. That's done. All the other guy has to do now is find one of these huts and he can start to work there. Here comes the trader again. That should be making us a slight amount of money. Although I don't think he made any... Let's see. Yeah, he bought only two berries because we didn't have enough. He should be buying ten planks. Let's see. Yes, he bought ten planks. All right. I really like the fact that you can see now what's happening. One, two, three, four... We got four extra villagers again. Right now it's going really quickly. Two extra transporters, two extra berry bushes. So now you see straight away why I built the extra berry bushes. Because we have a lot of people in now. And we only have one available job yet again. So um, we really need to start working on a few extra jobs. We are actually having a little bit of money now. The goods market. Yeah, well we need the stones first and all the other things unlocked. So we really need to start making some money. To unlock stonemasonry, for instance. Because there's nothing else that we can get that we don't have yet. Um, so we really need to make a little bit more money to work on our economy. So let's do it like this. Minus 15%. But this... Well, the difference is quite big. It doubles up the taxes. So that should get us the extra money that we need. And we can raise it... We can lower it later. When we have um, plenty of money 
and some extra work options. Let's see, because, yeah, so desirability went up here. It's not red anymore, so that's a good thing. Still plenty of room in our rustic church. That's really good. I think they added some space to it. Now that we can house 63 people in just this building, so that's really good. Otherwise, we always had to build quite a few good amount of churches. All right, he bought berries. He now bought planks. We have 87 coins, so we just need a few more to be able to get the stone polished hut. In the end, I do want to get the stone business somewhere here, because there's a good amount of stone and it's far away from the town center. But for now, it will stay right here for a while, because we don't have the money, of course, to buy all these zones. Just a single zone will cost you 250 coins and another 15 coins a week in maintenance or taxes so that's pretty expensive we're not going to spend that but we are going to spend money on the stonemason's hut because that will make us money although i think fishing might make us some money as well no not yet he wants to sell us fish um and yeah we're not going to get into clothing yet so we'll do we'll do the um stonemason now let's see ah the manor lord, the hedge, the kingdom, the military fort and the stake wall. All right, all very interesting, but we're going to go with the common path. Oh, we lost a bit of money. That's not good. All right, come on. I want to unlock the stonemason's hut, so who's going to buy me some berries so that we can unlock this? Yes, there we have it. The stonemason. Let's see, I think we should just place it right next to this place now, then, because, well, here's where the stone is. Although, stone will be um, taken here into the um, warehouse, so let's put it right here. Alright, we have villagers that we can add, and I think we can use them all at this point even though one or two might be left without a job for now. But that's just for now. And I do want to get a forager, because here we have the wood industry, and I would love to see the forager. We can place him right here, that's fine. And then we can assign a zone here for it to plant new trees in all the time. I'm going to wait with that a little while. So we can actually chop down a few more trees. Or what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to get rid of some of the extraction here. So now this area won't be extracted anymore. And that's where we are going to create the um, reforestation area right here. So it can already start to replant some trees. But they won't be chopped down for now. They'll still have to grow anyway. And we will be chopping down these trees that we don't want, and then later on we can start using this artificial forest. <laughs> that's very true, that's very true. We always want more. At least I, in, I indeed always want more. But I am really content with this update. There's a lot of cool new features in it, and I think they made it a little bit harder, because usually I make quite a bit more money already, just because of trading. And now it's really more focused on balancing your taxes and making sure that that all goes well. And I like that change. It's, it's enjoyable. Now we can already see that since employment is average, and average meaning we have one unemployed people, that really affected um, immigration. And because happiness is also a bit down because of taxes and food, that really impacts the immigration. So, um, our employment is back to high now because we have only one unemployed, but we had two, and that was already negatively effect affecting everything. So, um, it does have an effect, you can see it straight away. Only happiness being average, meaning 78%, will lower immigration from high to average, so we'll get fewer people in. So, those, effect those things can have big effects, so make sure people are happy and you provide them with jobs and stuff like that. Otherwise, things might get a little bit hard. Alright, we have the stone mason now. So, finally some stones are produced. I think we need to clear out some space for that, though. 
um, or just build an extra warehouse because right now this ain't going to work this way. The thing is, I don't want really want to build an extra warehouse right now because I'm, this is not the place where I want to store all my stone. On the other hand, we do have the transporters, so we can place it right here and leave it there for a long time for the stone. I would like to keep things always close to each other, but I think this can work out. So let's build another one right here, and we'll leave the stone business here for a while. What I am going to do is build another stonemason's hut, um, so that we get extra stones. And, of course, we can already set up the trade route, um, and to sell some polished stone... I think above 25, but not because we're not going to need that many right now. Right, one, two, three extra villagers. That's nice. <laughs> Lots of people like life. That's unless you have intent. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Alright, well these trees go rather quickly, although we of course play speed 3, so that's probably why. I like the fact that they created this route into town as well, so there's two routes now. Let's wait until they build this um, warehouse. We don't need that many extra builders, by the way. Usually I get um, an extra builder's workshop pretty quickly, but for now it still works. But we can see that the immigration incentive is low because we have three unemployed people out of 44, and that means that employment is low. So here you really see the effects of it. Three unemployed people out of 44, and it just has a big effect, and now immigration lowers. So um, yeah, you really should provide jobs for your people. So hopefully we can get the warehouse up quickly, because they'll provide four jobs. This one will provide another job, and that will help lower the unemployment of our people. Now, of course, I understand for those three unemployed people, that's two now, um, there's no um, social security or whatever, so they're not eating anything. So yeah, I'll give them a job soon. So I know why they are angry, but I don't know if they should be that angry. All right. Wealth now gave us points. 12 points, actually. That's good. And we have 147 coins. Cool. Now clothing is quite a bit farther away. Usually you get, could get to clothing quite quickly, but not right now. Farming is, a, is an option and fishing is an option. I'm going to go with fishing first. We do like boats, so let's get fishing. Only problem is if we want to get the fishing, we need to buy this zone, I think, to get some fishing up here. Of course, for farming, we needed some space here with a lot of place for the farm fields. So I think we're going to get this one a little bit quicker with fishing. Um, so all we need to do is save some money and then buy this zone. The uh, warehouse is done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it to two times normal stones and two times polished stones. Then we'll add the free villagers that we had. And I'm going to empty this out. Um, and we're going to change this out for extra planks, because with extra planks, um, we can have extra planks to sell, which is nice. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I, I have no unemployment now, so that it is working out. Although sometimes in coding, things uh, mess up a bit, or so that normal numbers will change or something like that. Um, but right now, well, I think we're doing quite okay. More and more trees get chopped, with that, which I really like. And yeah, we make some money. That's nice. Texas 7, trade 8, and our upkeep is only 2 now. So that's not too bad. And we're actually getting in a lot of stones already. We already have 17 polished stones. We can have more planks now. Looks good. Looks good. And even though, well, we just added like uh, an hour and 15 minutes right now, we have a village with 44 people. Uh, immigration incentive is back to high, so that's really good. And um, we've already explored quite a few of the new things with progression, with how to build the tax office and stuff like that. Oh, we're getting four new villagers. Um, so yeah, we've been we've been showing some new stuff already. 
And I like it. Now here you can see what happens to a berry bush every now and then. All the berries will be uh, taken from it. So this one is emptied out. They're still continuing on the other ones. And then at a certain point, they'll all get their berries back. If you build three berry bushes, three gathering huts with one set of berry bushes, you will run out uh, quite quickly. And then it takes quite a bit of time before the berries come back. So that's why I only built two. Um, you are able to actually build three and keep it going. But I just like the fact that there's always berries present. And um, with two gathering huts, berries are usually present. So this should work out quite well, just the way it is. Um, here we can see that there's two actually empty. Um, but that's really nice. They'll grow back. All right, we added four more people. Let's give them all a job. One, two. That's nice. Can we put somebody into the church actually already? No. I don't think so. Um, we can put people in the monastery, of course, but we don't have one yet. Um, but this is nice. To um, A merchant is approaching your village. All right. Question is, what does he want? We'll find out soon. Right now we have a slight problem that we have new people in that we don't have a job for yet. But we are getting in the extra money. And s hopefully soon we can start to do some fishing, which will be nice. Uh, but we'll have to see. I think we should be able to. I have to say, it does feel a little bit like the... the, the um, the old version of the game had a certain flow to it, and I did not have many periods of time where I was just waiting to continue. And right now I'm already waiting to continue, because we just need the money, we need some extra stuff. Um, I think the previous version had a little bit better flow to it, for my opinion, so that you could keep busy all the time. But I think that's what they're working on right now, of course, to... Um, implement all the changes in a way that you can get really keep the flow of the game. So I hope they bring that back, but I, I just missed the flow a little bit. Wood for the king. The king is planning new outposts around the borders. One of his merchants noticed your woodcutter camps. He wants another hundred. Well, we have it, so that's fine. Let's sell it to the king. There it is. So we get 100 gold and 10 coins with the um, kingdom estate. So that's nice. We could unlock military forts or the stake wall. Cool. Not going to do it, but it's there. Really cool. Alright, newcomers are approaching the village. There's no access to food. Question is, can this one keep up with all the food? Because it has only a capacity for 10. So maybe we should build another market stall just for berries so that they can really service everybody. But I'm not sure. I think she should be able to make it, but we'll find out. Um, for now, I think we have the money to actually buy this zone. So let's do so. Yes. And then we can start to build a fishing hut. If I can find... Did I unlock it already? I thought I did. Yes, there it is. The fishing hut. I'm going to build two fishing huts, I guess. One. Build. Ooh, hit that shift button a bit too late, so we'll have to do it like this again. Yes, there we go. Two. All right, two fishing huts. Will cost us quite a bit of wood, though, but that's fine. And I'm going to build two extra berry gatherers. One, two. All right, that's it. That's not too expensive. And, ooh, because of territory, we're losing a bit of money now, but that'll be fine. Should we invite all new people? Yes, I think so, because when the berry huts are done, we'll have six extra jobs, so that's good. It'll work out. Yeah, that's really true. That's really true, Kevin, and that's what I mean. And But um, I think the previous version for me, because it's also a bit personal, had a really good flow to it. I could keep going. Um, but, um, yeah... I think uh, I think they did quite well actually, um, and and with a little bit of work, this will work out well. And maybe I'm just too impatient because I'm doing this live stream and I just want to show a lot of different things, and I don't have any patience to wait for things to get done. Yeah, they are really slowly dissolving. I w I didn't know that. 
Um, but I also don't know what I do with those because we can still we can still unlock these anyway. So. Interesting. Well, we'll see. The manor house. The market stall. But that's just decorations. Kingdom is the fort. Should we unlock the fort? Well, we're going to unlock this already. And maybe we should also build the... Um, build a rustic church that has a stone bell tower. We could just add a stone bell tower to this one, I believe. And then we should have the... Um, oh, this is a door. Let's see. So we could add an extra tower to this one. And then we'll have what we need. Question is, does this look cool? I don't think so. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Let's get rid of it. We'll just have to build an extra church. If we want one with a stone tower. I'm not going to do it like this and add it. Yeah, it's a pity that those coins really dissolve. I didn't really notice it actually. But now I do. Too bad, but maybe uh, it's good because at least we get the money from it and it gives us good money, those missions, and that's what we're using at this point, just the good money. All right, don't forget to paint your extraction zones. You can see that this gathering hut is already done, but I forgot the extraction zone. There it is. So make sure that you don't forget those because otherwise they won't be doing anything useful with the berries and they'll just go to the nearest berry bush and that one will run out fairly quickly. So right now they're starting to work right there and that should you can see already that we've accumulated quite a good amount of berries and I'm going to dedicate this one just to berries and one piece of fish and maybe as soon as it fills up with fish we'll build an extra granary just for the fish so that they can store that as well but we'll see about that another gathering hut is done so we can put the people in there and that should leave us with nobody unemployed that's great but already four new villagers are coming in again. Yes, I'm going to build a granary. We're going to need it just to make sure that we um, can actually store all the goods that come in from all the different um, food sources. Now what I like to do is a granary this close to the market for me will usually hold different types of food so that the people from the market can get those types of food fairly quickly. Um, all right, let's build another piece of the food market so that we can sell the uh, fish. Um, and if they're farther away, or I build one close to the fish, then it will just hold the fish. Um, but yeah, for now, it'll do this way. Why? Yeah, there they all are. They're all in now. Four new people. One extra fisherman, and that's it. So we really need the granary in place. Um, so we can put some fish in here that they can sell soon in the marketplace, I hope. And then we'll see. Let's go check. Yeah, we do get a lot of space now. And I think... Yeah, we need a prosperity of 50, but it's already up to 39. So just a bit more. And we can unlock things like clothing and tooling and beer pro oh beer production. That's where we want to go to keep all the viewers happy. Luxury market sculpture. Careful planning edict. Refund 50% of the tools used after constructing a building part. Oh, that's cool. This is really nice. Alright, the market stall was edited. So what we need to do now is assign fish to it and an extra market tender and now we can start to sell some fish of course we don't have any fish yet but there will come the first fish in here and that should work out ah there's my granny i was thinking why aren't they not building it but they will build it soon okay that's working out we have two villagers in now that we don't have a job but we'll get those jobs quickly from the one, two, three more villagers coming in. There's actually a lot of villagers coming in. What I found out is that you don't have to zone the berries and stone if you extract it nearby. Well, I had not um, put this in the extraction. 
let's do it like this. Let's see. Now they're walking away. Let's see where they go. They'll probably just go to town for at this point. Yeah, they're all going into a house. But I don't think they'll start working on this right now. So let's go check. They're coming back now. There he goes. And off he is to this berry bush. I can tell you. See, there they go. He's going to this berry bush. So they're not using this one right now. They're just moving away. Um, so we really need to, to zone this, actually. See, they're all working here now. There's six of them right there. None of them is working here. So you really need to set the zoning right. It, it has to be done. Yes, we need more beer. Well, you can always sit on the roof terrace, of course, with my tavern in-game. Where I saved a few tables for you guys. And just hope it's not raining. They didn't add any tents in the game yet, so I can't help that. Um, but yeah, you can really sit nicely there. Alright, we have the extra villagers. All we want now is the granary to be done. Yeah, we're not ready to build the tavern in this game yet, but we will get to it at a certain point. Is there anything that we need to be unlocking at this point? I think we can do farming. I'm not really into decorations at this point. Um, and yeah, I think we should head towards farming because that will also give us some extra money. Although the um, military fort will be really nice too. So that could be something too. Well, unlock farming first. I think we'll have to... Um, well, this seems to be good for the land that we could use. Let's just build one farm and try it out. We'll build the farm on this side. Then we will build the... Um, weed on this side, so at least we get something out of it. And then we can also build a windmill to next to it. Right there. Yes. And of course the baker. But we'll build the bakery in town. Simply because I like that. And the people in town will love the smell of the bakery. Ooh, that's a bit too much money. We don't have that yet. But we'll have that soon, so that's fine. And then we can get to bread production. That'll be nice. Oh, I think I will like that. Yeah, we'll have to grow quite a bit in order to have a, a necessity and a good use for taverns, but that'll be, that'll be done at a certain point. We'll get to it. Um, I think there's some fish. Yeah, they already consumed five fish this week, so that's good. Yeah, we spent a lot of money on construction. We make money trading again, that's good. Let's keep that up. Um, but I now first want them to finish this granary, because now they switch to this work, because that's closer. And I don't want them to get to the... Uh, most close work, of course. I want them to finish the um, granary first. Hi, Dana! How are you? It's been a very long time. Very sorry about that, that I couldn't stream uh, last Wednesday. But I'm here now for, I think, another half hour. But really nice of you to join us. And I guess we're all really anxious to know how you're doing. Did you fully recover from the COVID already? Alright, let's put in some fish, some more fish, and I guess some berries as well, because we have the berry bushes close by. Um, and then in the end we can put some bread in this one and skip these berries. So let's change this out for bread, so that if we change the market, I'll have to add another stall again um, for the bread. Place that right here, I think, yes. Um, so they'll have to work. And maybe we have to build a granary here too. But that's good, that's just providing extra jobs. To store all the grain and stuff. So yeah, we'll build an extra granary here as well. 
if we have the money for it, which we don't right now, but they'll come. They'll come. They'll be fine. Let's finish the farm now so that we can at least start to put people in and start um, painting a crop field. Yield very high. That's what we want to see. So let's get a very high yield from this field. No fun intended. All right. One, two, three farmers in there. Let's go. Awesome, just at the late lunch. Ah, well, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Oh, great, fully recovered. That's really what we want to hear. How's your little one? No, she's not healed yet. Um, still has a nasty cough. Um, with some gooey stuff in her throat. But um, it's going slightly better every day. No fever anymore. No throwing up anymore. Really grateful for that. So, um, yeah, she's going to go to school tomorrow. Um... She really wants to go, and it's 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 fine. It's just that I've been uh, reading up a bit on it, and apparently since uh, COVID, um, it's more common for kids to get sick and stay sick for a few days longer than normally because their immune system is just a little bit off because, well, during COVID, they didn't see that many other children and stuff like that. So it's all a bit jumbled up, um, apparently. So it's, it's normal that they're l sick for like two, three days longer than usually. And she'll be fine, but, um, well, like Wednesday when she was throwing up a lot, I'm not, just not feeling okay to go streaming and, and just trying to listen at the same time if she has to throw up and then run towards her. So that's why I skipped the stream. But she'll be better. Yeah, she'll get better. It'll be fine. It just takes time. And she's happy. She's... Uh, we, we still let her play outside every now and then, and she's just a happy girl with a nasty cough, so that'll, that'll be fine. We're not worried about it or something, I just want her to get better, because it's nice for her to be better, and to feel well. But that's it. Let's get an extra fisherman, let's put somebody in the market stall, although we also need somebody to be in the um, transport business. But glad to hear you're fully recovered. And how's your work? Very busy again, or... I know you have these busy times and every now and then a bit of slower time. Well, I think quite a few of our trees are gone. Is it just me, or do they chop trees a lot quicker? Because usually it takes a very long time for me to clear a whole area of trees. And apparently right now... They're doing it in a very fast rate. So it could just be me, but I think they're really just chopping down trees quicker than they used to. I mean, I don't remember having a map this cleared out already, and I do love it. Alright, let's set this to um, being chopped down as well. As well as reforestate it, and then we'll see. I guess we'll do it like this a bit. All right, well, taking it easy is always good, as long as you do make enough money, of course. I hope it doesn't really affect the amount of money that you make, or your ability to make money. Yeah, I know, I know. Thanks, Kevin, I know. But yeah, it just doesn't feel right for me to um, sit here on my computer while my daughter isn't feeling well, and she needs me every now and then, so that's why I wasn't here Wednesday. And it's fine, I mean, I don't... It's not like I'm really... Um, I mean, I'm sorry because it's just a lot of fun and I would have loved to have been here, but, well, I wasn't and that's fine because it has a good reason, so... But right now, I'm here again, so that's a lot of fun. And we have plenty of space, I just don't know what to do with this space. What else can we unlock that we really need? Hmm much actually although i think we're going to go with the fort let's unlock the military fort and start working on it i think that'll be nice well you guys are so nice thank you a lot yeah see gratje i i was just feeling like they were chopping faster and now you you acknowledge that i think it's true not that I mind, I mean, it's fine. I finally can get a clear map without... Um, 
all these trees in the way all the time. Alright, let's get one in the baker. We need one in the mill at least. And we need a granary guy. Now we still have one unemployed. Alright, so one in each granary. That should work. Now this one needs to be set up. So we'll put in some wheat, some grain. And bread. Wheat, flour and bread. Alright. And bread should be put in here as well. So maybe... We should change this one out for some extra flour. Cool. So this is working. Yeah, that's true, Kevin. So that's why I wasn't here. But, well, it's a bit... Um, you just have mixed feelings about it. I mean, I wasn't in any doubt or something like that. I was going to be there for my girl, so no doubt. But it's we just have so much fun in here, and I really enjoy... Uh, playing games and spending time with you guys and talk to you guys, so um, I was feeling sorry to, to miss that, although it was perfectly fine, of course, but yeah. But I'm glad everybody's here, so that's really nice. And we have fun playing these new um, updates. 46 prosperity, so just four more points, and we can unlock things like clothing and stuff. And I would really love to do that and get working on some sheep and some clothing. And that really gives me the feel of the town in foundation. Because right now, without the clothing and stuff, it just doesn't feel complete. So I really want to get working on the clothing. So far, we've managed to give everybody a house, though. So that's a good thing. Um, and they're all really building towards the town center. That's really nice. Have to be aware, though, we now have 60 people. Built houses here as well, by the way. Um, so I think we need to expand the church a bit because it's at its max. So that could be something. We'll have to expand the church. All right, two new people came in. I think we should put one in the baker and one in the miller. And then if new people come in again, we can put them in the uh, granaries. That'll be fine. Ah, straight off a new house is being built here. Great. There as well. So that's nice. A new till can be heard. There's no more pleasant sight than a mountain of berries, such as the one stockpiled in your granary. This red wealth reassures your village that they know they will be well fed for a while. Very well. Your villagers are rejoicing over this wonderful story. So we accumulated over 500 berries and now everybody's very happy. And we get a happiness bonus of 10% for villagers with citizens, commoner, serf and newcomer status. So that's good because that means that we can raise more taxes if we want to. Alright, a new tale can be heard. A delicious aroma is being carried through the warm winds this morning. Your village's very first bundle of bread is readied out of the oven. To the village's delight and appetite. Very well. Oh, we get another 10% bonus. This is great. Oh, I do like these new add-ons. That's cool. Oh, that's really nice. And we now have 100% happiness even though we raise taxes. Cool. Alright, let's see. Because I think we should um, get the bailiff. And start putting him out on a job too. So let's get the guy. Um, I think we'll have to set him though. Oh, a new advice can be heard. Villagers consider we are prosperous enough to be assisted by a bailiff. This nominated person will handle critical tasks such as prospecting nearby deposits and petitioning the estate on your behalf. Let's have a bailiff. All right. Build a great hall. Build a bailiff's office. Alright, we'll have to build a bailiff's office. So now what we can do, we can select a function. We'll build a bailiff's office. And, um... Yeah, well, what should be his office? I think we can just give him a piece of this. That could be his office, I guess. I think I'm going to build three of these, though. One, two, three. have to move this one. Um... In the middle, yes. Right here in the middle, yes. Build. Alright, I'm really... Check to assign a bailiff. Trade price bonus of 10% from the village with clergy, kingdom and labor alliances. Trade bonus, yeah, that's the same. Job learning speed is increased by 10%. Hmm. I'll get the trading bonus. That's fine. Alright, so we should now have a bailiff, I believe. Yes. 
So let's start prospecting. Interesting. And we have a new advice that can be heard. Edicts and privileges. I really like this new system. This is cool. The villagers believe that we are prosperous enough to enact our very first edict. These are laws and policies that help you shape the village in new ways. You can also enable privileges, which are benefits granted by each of the estates. Once enacted, enacted, edicts and privileges have to be revised by the bailiff in order to be removed. Let's ratify an edict. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Alright, the bailiff's office, that's being built, that's cool. Church, not doing that yet. Acquire a contractual wage edict in the book area. Alright. Um, now we'll have to find how we... right here. I think we had to unlock one through one of these. Right here. So we need 200 coins, then we can unlock this one. And then we can enact it. Alright, that's cool. So we can... You can really get more options to steer your village in a certain direction. Now, I do believe that these are all... Um, you don't actually get that many. Um, I would like a system where you could choose things that have their benefits and their downsides. And you can create a mixture of edicts that, in the end, benefit your town and could steer it in a certain direction. So, for instance, if you want to go full military, then you can get certain edicts that will just help that and that will harm your economy a little bit or something like that and something else. But for now, this is a very fun add-on that we get can get stuff like that. So we'll have to check that. Let's see. Improving trade with Northbury. Thanks to your increased trade, a large number of folks are now looking to settle in Northbury. Yet the village struggles to feed the extra workforce and ask if you could send them much needed bread. How much? 50 bread in 60 days. But we have 30 already, so that should be okay. We don't have the coins to invest. We're not going to ask the provost to help. So we'll do what we need. And we'll send him the bread. So, um, yeah, that should, w that should work out. I'm going to hold the bread now, I believe. Ah, this is toggle tracking. Yeah, we're going to stockpile bread now so nobody can get it. And as soon as we have enough, we're going to send it out. That'll be good. Oh, you're, you're, it's not my weight doesn't depend on the workload. Oh, that's great. That's really good. Well, of course, if you have a good wage, then that's great. Um, but yeah, glad you don't have to worry about stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know if there's a technical term for it, but... Um, Well, I guess if you just get a normal wage, then that's pretty fixed. Um, I guess you just have you're just a contract worker, then you have a contract, then you work for that, and and that's it. All right, let's see. Deliver fifty bread. Do we have it? No, we have forty-eight. So almost there with the bread. Then we can send it out, get some points for it. That'll be nice. And we get a new villager again. We have five villagers without a job now. Oh boy, reading the chat really messed things up. Totally forgetting what I was doing and stuff like that, but here we are. Alright, let's see. 50 bread, come on. Just bake me a few breads. Well, there's no flour because, well, there's not enough grain, but there should be soon, since these will start to harvest. Yep. Working now, all right. Luckily, we have 60 days for these missions, which is a long time in this game, so don't worry about it. Um, and it will be fine. And, ooh, 49 prosperity. Just one more and we can unlock clothing. I'm looking forward to it. That'll be awesome. Um, the bailiff's office should be ready, I think. Ah, we, need, we had to start the other one again. Influence with one estate. So we'll do that next time. But at least now these are all the bailiff's office, which is cool. That's nice. He's Ah, we can now see in these prospecting and how long it will take. So that's really good. I like that. Um, 
Storage is full. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, we acquired a lot of stone. We acquired a lot of planks. So that's all very good. I'm really happy with that. Call it a bribe. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Alright, so extraction is going very well. Maybe we need to plant a little bit of a bigger forest. Um... Just to make sure that we get enough trees to be chopped down all the time. Otherwise, we might run out of trees, and that's not what we want. Um, and, of course, we're going to buy a few new zones soon, hopefully. Work our way towards here so we can set up a proper stone industry. That might be something. I think that might actually be good. We do have the bread now, so let's sell that out. Very good, that worked. Northbury trade capacity plus 30 per item. So we can now trade more with Northbury. That is actually a really good um, thing that we have. Because I believe right now the trader comes up and can only buy 10 each. And if he can now buy a lot more, that'll be great. Alright, let's add these two people to our village. Give them a job. We don't have any open jobs now though, so we'll have to be aware of that. And the... Um, Plus that we had with happiness is now out of the question. But yeah, that's good. Alright, let's see. The trader from Northbury. Oh, he's not going to buy anything extra, I believe. So that's not going to work, I think. But we'll see. At least he bought ten berries. And now he bought some stone. No planks. Going to do that right now. Yep, he bought ten planks. So that's good. I like that. A new advice can be heard. Promoting villagers. Your hardworking serfs believe they are due for a promotion. Once all of the needs have been properly fulfilled, a villager can move on to the next status. Commoners and citizens provide the village in a new ways, but have additional needs as well. Let's get you promoted. Alright, so promotions are still there. We'll just have to um, do that at a certain point at the end of the month. So that's interesting. Um... And we now have 59 prosperity points. We can unlock clothing. That's what we're going to do straight away. I really want to get into clothing. I do love the clothing industry. Let's go. Let's get some sheep. Oh, I really love the sheep farms. And I love the sheep in it. They're just so cool. Alright, let's get two sheep farms in this case. Let's have those sheep running around. That's a lot of fun quite expensive but that's okay then we can get the weaver we can put these close to town that's fine although we also need to store some clothing and we need to store it in a warehouse so that might be something so maybe um, we'll build a warehouse first put it out of town's site so we'll build it right here and then we can just build the weaver close to it as well as the tailor Outside of territory. Yeah, that's a problem. I'll just build it like this. Yes, and then we will build the tailor closest to town. Just because it looks nice. And this should provide us with the clothing. Interesting. Now we have to get to the market again. And select... Yeah, that's not good. We need to unlock the goods market, I believe. Where is it? Yeah, Market Splendor. Food stalls? No, that's not the right one. Um, goods Market. There it is. Another 50 coins. But it'll be good. Now we can build the Goods Market. The Bailiff found a minerals deposit. Some quartz. Oh, that's nice. There's newcomers. A mandate available. Let's send him out on an estate mission. Yes, we did. We followed that. Alright, let's get these people in. Do we have a job for them? I think we should slow down a bit because things are running out of control right now. Yeah, a lot of jobs coming in. Don't even have time to um, to read the chat at this point. So we're going way too quickly. Um, but yeah, things are running. And yeah, let's see. I think we have everything now. All we need is the goods market. Can we do that in here, or do we have to build a whole new market? Ah, here's the good stall. Well, they changed those stalls a bit, and I do enjoy it, so that's nice. Um, I just like the way it looks, like you have real fish, bread, and um, 
berries. And it just looks really nice. So now they'll have to build all this stuff. It's very crowded in town, but I like the fact that they really um, keep the houses close together. I, I think that really works well for the game. Usually it would be very spread out, and I've been reading up on it. They are now more putting the houses more close together, so that's really nice. All right, let's see. How is it with your holiday plans, Dana, by the way? Because I believe that right around now or next month you had plans to go on a holiday. Or am I totally mistaken right now? I'm not sure anymore. I do tend to forget a lot of things. But I do remember something like that, I believe. Well, these are quite a few buildings. I think we should rush the um, sheep farms first so the sheep can start to grow some wool and actually produce something before we get things like the tailor and the weaver and we don't have any resources for them. I don't think that's going to work. No, we'll get two new villagers. That's nice. <laughs> oh, that's a really bad joke. <laughs> well, bad jokes are mostly a lot of fun, so that's good. And, of course, if you're just watching this video, lurking around, not chatting, that's totally fine. Just feel welcome. I'm very nice that you're here and that you're watching. I hope you have a good time. If you have the time for it, please hit that thumbs up. And, of course, if you want to subscribe to my channel to get notified on all other videos I create. And always feel free to just join the chat and have some extra fun with it. And, and talk to everybody and, and, and mingle in. That's totally fine. Ooh, a place where you can swim with orcas. That's really nice. But if that's... Yeah, that's a new budget thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, at least you have something to save for, so that can be really nice. And I guess when you um, actually do make it there and swim with orcas, that's a dream come true. So that would be really great. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't get too many sheep, but, um, well. I'll just let you guys count the sheep when I'm done, and just hope you don't fall asleep. Ooh, we have nil immigration, because apparently it's going really bad at this point. So they really had to, uh, <laughs> it's just, just a slight error. Should just be, actually be zero, and not something like this, but it's cool because unemployment is quite high because I have a lot of jobs reserved for all these but well apparently they're not really building this sheep farm built perfect there we go we can employ somebody let's spawn a sheep and yeah we'll do five when that's not an abuse of the system that's just fun all right here we have our sheep running around you can see they're quite young because they're still quite active and normally when you pass by sheeps in the pasture and they're fully grown they're just staring at you like who am i what am i doing am i really a sheep all right i'm not going to move anymore um ooh, and they grow wool rather quickly actually but yeah these are, have to be pretty young sheep because they're still running around ah i get that yeah well it's a priority thing i guess that's true well, I don't know the, the prospect of when you go to Ireland or something like that. Um, but if you go to Ireland, for instance, and you start working there, and you can actually make a bit more money there or whatever, then that could be um, could be something interesting as well. Yeah, the sheep are really cute. Here they go. One without the wool, the other's with wool, so hopefully we'll get some extra wool soon. And then you just see them grow. You actively can see them grow. And then they'll get some extra wool on it. Which is really nice. And, well, a worker should come soon to um, shave some sheep, I guess. This is really cool. It's like little sheep robots, how they move around. But it's fun. All right, we'll put somebody else in the market stall and start selling some clothing. We're not having any clothing yet, but we'll have soon, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, 
Doesn't Gandalf swim at orcs? Well, that's what he has to do, but I'm not doing that. Alright, I think we should get an extra builder's office at this point. Because we're building a lot, and they can't keep up. And the builder is all the way here. That's a long walk. But it also feels a little bit like a waste to get an extra builder's office, but I'm still going to do it anyway. I want extra builders. Where are, Where is it? Right here. We can build it right here because we're going to do a lot more building in this corner anyway. So let's build a builder's office right there. Add three builders to it. And at least immigration can come back now, so that'll be a good thing. That's true, that's true. Well, I think that's that's what I meant by um, if you go to Ireland and you, you live there permanently and you can have a good income there and you can save money then, then you might even be able to save money on the trip because it's way closer. And you'll be there anyway, and then hopefully you can um, you can go to to Norway at a certain point. But if you want to go to Ireland and live there permanently, and for the same price you can go to Norway ten days, then maybe um, then I could imagine that your priority would be to go to Ireland first, and then uh, later at a certain point go to Norway. But first go to Ireland, start building up your new life. Uh, doing well at your job, making good money, and then uh, go to Norway a little later. And you're way closer then, so that's cool. And I guess we'll just have to plan the um, get-together in Ireland then to save you money for your, for your for your vacation. We'll all just have to go to Ireland then. Alright, it's time to start building a treasury. Um, I think we should build a treasury tower, but it will only expand it by 60. This will also expand it by 60. This will expand it by 150. That's also another 150. Hmm, interesting. I think we should buy a zone first. We'll buy this territory. And then we'll just build a... Um... Can we do it somewhat like this? Yes. So this is going to be the treasury building behind the real uh, manor lord. So we'll have a lot of room for extra gold, because we, we do make quite a bit of money. Ooh, all go together to swim with orc as well. Um, totally fine by me if I make the money for it. Otherwise not, and right now I don't make the money for that. Trying to get some improvements done on our house. And, ah, now this guy can carry 30 more. So this is really good. Now we can really sell some stuff and make some good money out of that. So I'm happy with that. Um, I um, recently got a few contractors here to see if they could um, work on my house. I have... Uh, a little bit small flat roof on the back side of the house and I want to insulate that from the outside. And one guy said, well, your roof is in perfect condition, so you really have to think if you want to do that because it will cost you a lot of money, around 5,000 euros. And then another guy came in who also came up with around 5,000 euros for insulating that. And then another guy came in and he... Um, just blinked with his eyes and then told me in the end that it would be 12,000 euros. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, we're saving money for uh, doing some stuff in the house to insulate better and save some money on the energy bill. So I'm not going to swim with orcas anytime soon. Alright, let's get another shepherd, let's get another transporter, and let's get two weavers, or at least one. That's, that's it. So we'll have to get some extra sheep then. Where's the sheepies? Here's the sheepies. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's it. Five new sheep. Look at those small sheep. They're growing already, but they're small now. Here come the workers. That's cool. Oh, you, you have an orca tattoo. That's cool.
So, like, is it like a very small one, or or you didn't want like a very big orca tattooed on your back or something like that? That would be cool. Or just tattoo a very big back fin on your back so that it looks like you're when you're swimming that you're actually an orca. That could be nice. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I'll check it out after the stream. That's nice. That's cool. All right, let's speed things up a bit again. I believe that now that we are slowly starting to produce some clothing, we can soon unlock a new trade route because we're still playing this game, so I still have to check this every now and then. Um, let's see. Yeah, 20 pieces of clothing and we can unlock a new trade route to sell some bread. That's nice. So that's, that's something that I want to do. Very good. Well... 81 villagers already. It's not like we uh, already have 100 like Hratje has when he started this game again. But, well, we're getting there. And I like it. Here we have a nice overview of our little town. Well, we need to expand a bit, but it looks good. It looks good. Here we can see that the Manor Lord's being changed now. That works. Can we already enact... Yeah, we can enact this... Um, Contract degree. So let's go to Edicts and Privileges. We now have one to unlock. It decreases the cost of every mandate by 50%. And it decreases the time of... Decreased the time of every mandate by 50%. Alright, so it just halves the time of them or something like that. Well, it's fine. We can deal with it. Ooh, we can unlock tooling. We can unlock beer production. Sturdy material. I really like this one, by the way. Refund 50% of the tools used after constructing a building part. I'm not going to do that one yet, because we don't have the money for it. I do want to put people in a job position, so let's get an extra weaver. That'll be nice. Treasury edited. And now we have space for 1100 coins. That's good, that's good. Stop distracting Pathmos. Oh no, please distract me. It's totally fine. We already created a nice village, so that's really cool. Um, it's just something I have to remind myself of every now and then that I should not only read the chat, but I have to game as well. Feels a bit weird though every now and then when I'm just reading the chat and talking to people and then all of a sudden I start talking about the game again and I play the game. But of course, um, that's basically why I'm here for, to play a game and have fun with you guys. But it just feels strange or something like, sometimes like I'm being impolite or whatever, just um, having a conversation and then and then continuing with the game again. That's not what I mean, of course, but I do have quite a few people actually watching these streams afterwards. Um, the uh, Farthest Frontier streams, of course, have been watched quite a bit afterwards, so I do want to keep talking about the game so people that watch it afterwards will also have a good time. So don't feel offended if I talk to you and a few minutes later or a few seconds later, I'm talking about the game again. It has nothing to do with you. It's just because, um, well, I have to talk about the game as well. That's why we're here. All right, I think we should expand a bit more, but we'll have to unlock some stuff to do, actually. We have stone, we have bread, we have fish now. So we should get either into tooling or beer production. That is a nice one, but... Hmm. What's this? Dairy farming? Ah, so they really changed that up. So we're going to get beer first and then we're going to get milk. What's that? I know that's Gratje's way to just get beer first and then get something healthy, but it's not usually my way. We'll see. At least we'll get the transporters in and we'll have to think about what next to do. Housing insufficient. Well, there should be plenty of space for more housing, actually. Ooh, and we have to uh, do something about the church. Because right now our church will probably be too small for only 63 people, I believe. Yes. So let's expand our church a bit. So that at least we can house enough people. Alright, how many people can fit in there? 39. Oh, that's good for now. That will work for now. 
Yeah, I, I do include the option that you can also re-watch the chat, of course. So that's true, that's true. They can read that, but... Well... Um, I just like to do both. So And I'd like to talk to you guys, and I'd like to um, keep talking about the game as well and show what I'm doing. Although, it has already been um, more than two hours, so at least we're going to stop with the game. Um, so thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you did please give this video a thumbs up, if you haven't done so please subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions just leave them in the chat or in the comment section of one of my videos, I will respond to it. And then of course I hope to see you in another video, although for you guys I will remain right here now, so you can just keep chatting and I'll talk to you guys, I'll just have to uh, save up the game. But I won't leave straight away, so just feel free to keep talking and I'll talk with you guys for a few minutes and then I will leave of course. Let me just put the screen on end of the stream, and then we can keep chatting, of course. Gives me time to finally read the chat. Yeah, I had a lot of fun too. Thanks a lot. It was great again, and um, really nice to uh, play the game again, especially with all the new features. And, uh, well, we'll probably do one or two more just to explore some more features. I'll have to dive into this a bit, but I should have time for that this week, so that should not be a problem. Yeah, have a great week, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Make sure you stay healthy and happy. And, of course, if you want to talk about something, whether it's gaming, something fun, or something you just want to get off your chest, feel free to join the Discord and just talk to any one of us. Always willing to talk back. And, of course, always add your game suggestions. They'll be really appreciated. And, uh, well, I guess we'll see you next time. Whether it's in a video or in the live stream. And, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, I didn't run into any bugs. I was kind of surprised by it, but yeah, we uh, at least as far as we know, maybe something that went wrong in the background that we didn't notice, but so far... Hmm. And I think with the whole progression system, we have 80 points right now. I think we do quite well, actually. And I do feel a little bit more of the flow of the game again, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing, I guess. I will things, and I will, of course, already say hi back, because that's what she's going to say. And um, I know she's been peeking around one or two times before, not saying anything, of course, but she was just here uh, reading the chat and hearing me talk and having a lot of fun and laughter doing that. So, um, And I already invited her to just join the chat one time and start talking to you guys, and she, she's willing to. I just have to find the right time to do that. Um, but she really appreciates... Um, the fact that I do this and she enjoys it, but she also really appreciates you guys for talking to me and for being so nice to me and for supporting me so much. So thanks a lot, also on behalf of my wife. And uh, well, I think it's time to just go off and uh, see my wife for a few uh, minutes before she goes to bed because she has to work early in the morning. Uh, so thank you all so much and I will see you all next time. You guys and girls are the best. Bye bye. <laughs>